ABC News with Anna Pikett. The Prime Minister is in National Cabinet with state and territory leaders as millions of Australians are locked down across the country. Melissa Clark reports. When it comes to the matters of economic support, that has really gone through a lot of iterations over the last couple of weeks. We saw it change several times as the situation developed here, first in Sydney and then in Melbourne. But it's now at a fairly settled point. So those sorts of economic supports that have really dominated a lot of National Cabinet discussions in recent times uh, are likely to be much more settled this time around. They'll have their usual updates on the epidemiological report. Uh, they'll also continue to look at the vaccine rollout. Interestingly, they're also going to be delving into more detail about the Doherty Institute's modelling that uh, they received at their last meeting. In news just in, a 26-year-old man has been charged with the alleged rape of former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins. Ms Higgins alleged earlier this year she'd been assaulted by a colleague in a ministerial office in March 2019. ACT Policing has issued a statement saying the man will appear before the ACT Magistrates Court in September. The New South Wales government says hospitals are under stress as the state recorded 291 cases of COVID-19 today, the highest daily total since the start of the pandemic. There are currently 304 COVID patients in hospital, 50 people in intensive care, with 22 on ventilation. A woman in her 60s from southwest Sydney died yesterday and is the second death connected to an outbreak at Liverpool Hospital. Health Minister Brad Hazard says people entering hospitals with COVID symptoms should be alerting staff before exposing them. The health system is under stress, as you'd expect, um, because there are a number of cases that are coming into our hospitals and obviously there are patients being cared for. But our, I want to thank our nurses, our doctors, our cleaners, our administrative staff who are there every day putting themselves at the front line to keep us all safe. The Victorian opposition says there's no justification for the entire state to be in lockdown with no positive cases or exposure sites in regional areas. There are 10,000 close contacts already in isolation and the government says some of those are probably isolating in regional Victoria. Today, the state recorded six cases, all of which were infectious whilst in the community. Opposition leader Michael O'Brien says the state government needs to be more targeted with its restrictions. There are large slabs of regional Victoria that have got no positive cases They've got no exposure sites. There's no justification for keeping every inch of Victoria in lockdown. Queensland's Chief Health Officer says it's too early to decide if the South East lockdown will lift on Sunday as scheduled. Jessica Stewart reports. The state recorded 10 new locally acquired COVID-19 infections, all linked to a cluster involving several Brisbane schools. It takes the outbreak to 89 cases in total. Chief Health Officer Dr Jeanette Young says eight of today's cases have not been infectious in the community, with the other two having only been out in the community for for a day, which was during the southeast lockdown period. So that's all very reassuring, but we've got to keep it up for the next few days. We're not there yet. Dr Young says she will wait until Sunday morning to see the case numbers before deciding if lockdown will lift at 4pm as planned. US President Joe Biden says the United States will dramatically cut carbon emissions this decade in order to fight climate change. A pre-recorded message from Mr Biden was played at the Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Meeting this morning. It's the first time a US president has addressed the group and comes as strategic competition intensifies in the region. Mr Biden says climate change is already hitting the Pacific and it's crucial to act quickly. You're already feeling the impact of having to adapt. The United States is committed to dramatically reducing our emissions by 2030 and building resilience into vulnerable communities globally. Australia's won its first Olympic medal in beach volleyball since the Sydney Games, taking silver in the women's competition. The Aussie pair of Maria Faye Artacho del Sola and Taliqua Clancy lost the gold medal playoff to the USA in straight sets. Clancy says it's a special feeling to medal, but they have mixed emotions about the result. At the moment, it's definitely a mixture. You know, we go from being super proud to feeling a bit low because obviously it, it's still a loss and, and we wanted to, you know, really get the gold. But, you know, Alex and April were just better than us today. Meanwhile, Aussie golfer Hannah Green has shot four under in her third round to be tied for fourth with a round to play. You're up to date with the latest from ABC News. You can get more on our website anytime, abc.net.au forward slash news. Thank <laughs> you.